Now that you have a little bit of Rails knowledge under your belt, you know how to create scaffolds and how the file system works, it's time to move on to the next step, which is knowing how to access your data without having to look at it in the browser. And a tool that Rails has for that is the Rails console. I use it daily for accessing the database, running test queries, and doing. I can also call methods and do things like that. Technically, you could do all of this in the code and in the browser, but it's much more efficient when you perform this in the console because you can just write, uh, write simple lines of code instead of having to uh, be more explicit with it. It saves you a lot of time. A good example of this would be if you wanted to run a test query to see the results in the browser, you'd need to update the code in the controller, possibly update the corresponding view, and ensure all the columns are captured, everything like that, and then go refresh the browser to see if it populated the query. And then you'd still have to work through things like being able to count how many records it brought back, and it would require a lot more time. Whereas you could run that identical query right in the console and have all of that done for you automatically. The way to start up the Rails console is just type in Rails C, and that's C is short for console, and it'll boot it up, and there you go, you have access right into the console. And to close it out, you hit Control D, that'll close it. And then another thing that is really helpful is something called the sandbox mode. And so if I do Rails C dash dash sandbox, it'll load up the console, but you can see right here that it adds another line of text. It says, any modifications you make will be rolled back on exit. So if I deleted records or if I edited records, I did anything like that, I could do anything I wanted as soon as I close back or close out the console, it rolls everything back to the way it was before I started. So it's a really cool way of being able to run test algorithms or anything like that. Uh, one important thing to note is say that your application is a little bit advanced and you're wanting to run a query that mails, uh, emails users. If you run it in sandbox mode, it will still email the user. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and I know this from personal experience. Uh, a lot of times you get so used to uh, writing test scripts and things like that in sandbox mode that you forget that outside calls, such as API calls or anything like that, they don't realize that you're in sandbox mode. So be very cognizant of that. Uh, it will roll back any changes to your local database and uh, it'll be, it's great at doing that. But if you send out emails based on a script you're running or you connect to a third party API, that doesn't fall into the, uh, the sandbox kind of umbrella. So be, just be aware of that and, uh, and you know, be smart about when you use it. So, and you can exit sandbox mode by hitting control D and you can see it rolls back any transactions right there. So that's how, that's a little bit about the Rails console, some reasons on why to use it, and then also how to start it up, how to close it out, and then how to use a sandbox mode. In the next video, we're going to walk through how to create some actual queries.